my channel. Today I thought I would do a products of the moment video because I've not done one in so long. The last kind of favourites video that I've done was my January favourite, so we're now in May. So I'm not going to name these by month, I'm simply going to call them my products of the moment, which is what it kind of started off as. Um, and I, I feel as if because I've been doing quite a lot of makeup tutorials recently and a lot of them haven't had um, any kind of audio over them except for music playing, it's nice sometimes just to sit there and have a little chit chat with you all. So I think we're going to talk about quite a lot of products today so I'm going to dive right in. Okay so the first product I'm going to talk about is a home product and it's the Jo Malone English Pet and Freezer Room Scent. Um, this was a kind of splurge purchase for me. Usually um, with Jo Malone I either get its gifts or well in the month of May I've got quite a lot happening and I've, I need to spend quite a lot of money on other things so I shouldn't have really bought this but I did, I needed it. Um, if you were thinking that, oh my god, how many mils in this do you get? So you get 75 mils. 75? Yeah, you get 75 mils in this. And if you were thinking to yourself, the room sprays are £38, by the way. Um, and if you were thinking to yourself, well, it's 100, no, sorry, it's £80 for 100 mils of the perfume. Well... Is the room spray, can I not just spray that on my clothes and then save myself money and have 75 mils of English Pen and Freezer perfume? You would be wrong. <laughs> this is so embarrassing admitting this. English Pen and Freezer is one of my favourite scents that Jo Malone do. I have the candle and I now have the room spray. I've never had the anything for you, like I've never had a perfume, I've never had a body cream and that scent. So I was going to a photo shoot the other day and I thought I'll spray my jumper with a little bit of the room spray. I didn't want to put it directly on my skin because I had a few worries about that. And it was stinking. I It was so synthetic -y and so strong because you think about it one little bit of fragrance has to do the whole room so that was an epic fail on my part so if you were thinking that you could substitute your fragrance for this you would be wrong don't be a tight arse like me and chill out on the actual stuff um but anyway let's actually talk about what it's designed to do um room spray is amazing i find it's quite nice if you've just changed your bed sheets and you want them to have some sort of scent to them um, I know what if I do my bed sheets in the washing machine, I will they'll come out the wash and I'll fold them up and I'll put them away in a drawer. And if they go straight into a drawer, then obviously they're going to lose the scent of your washing powder or your fabric softener. So I think sometimes just by spraying this or a room spray in general all over the room makes everything kind of revamp the freshness. And uh, what better way to do that than with Jo Malone, which you all know if you follow me. And if you don't follow me, then you should. And if you don't know, Jo Malone is one of my all-time favourites. I literally have a shrine to Jo Malone in my bedroom. So I have a new addition to the collection. Okay, so the next product is a hair thing. And I don't know why it took me so long to get one of these. And I actually got it quite a while ago, but I obviously haven't spoke about it. It is the Tangle Teaser. And I know I might have been the last person in the whole wide world to catch on to how good Tangle Teasers are, but they are so good. The only thing, issue that I have with the Tangle Teaser is... Usually what I'll do is, obviously I'll do my hair before I get on the tube in the morning, but... If I go outside and it's been particularly windy, which it really has been in London recently, it's been super, super windy. By the time I got on the tube, I look like I've been dragged through a bush backwards. So, he pressed all, I need to bring the tangle teaser out to everyone on the tube's annoyance and brush my hair. So, there's me on the tube brushing away. And because the tangle teaser doesn't have a handle like a normal brush, it makes it really easy for you to launch it halfway down the tube or wherever you are. That is my only negative 
comment about it and I don't even know if it is a negative comment because I don't necessarily think I would want a handle on it. I don't think I would. But really good for me because my hair, um, this is all my own hair, I don't, I don't genuinely, I don't generally wear hair extensions, I wear pieces sometimes for thickness, but I'm just trying to show you how long it is. I just had three inches off it recently, but um, it needs dyed though, so don't judge my roots. This is all my own hair, so because I have such long hair, um, it gets super, super knotted and ratty and it's so hard to brush through when it's wet. And the Tangle Teaser has just made life a whole lot better for me. I usually use an Incinus brush, which is like a, a bristle brush to do my chugs and my tugs because I have really strange hair that just seems to chug and knot all the time. And I, I get absolutely slagged rotten all the time in YouTube videos from people saying, like when I'm doing this tutorial or when I'm doing the makeup from people saying leave your hair alone and you've probably already noticed like a million times in this video I constantly touch my hair but it's because it's so freaking long and it's so bloody tuggy that I need to constantly be checking that it's okay so it's just an annoying habit that I have and it's because my hair is genuinely annoying and the Tangle Teaser has been really good at getting through those knots because it does mat super easy and I probably say I do need to brush my hair like every hour, probably about twice an hour actually, maybe even more. So Tangle Teaser is perfect because I can put it in my makeup brush belt as well behind all my brushes. Okay, so the next product I have, now that we've done the kind of homey stuff and the hair stuff, we can, we can dive right into your favourite makeup. So the first thing that I'm going to show you is actually a makeup tool and it is the Makeup Forever um, Blending Brush and this is the 140 Wavy it says. I don't know if that's the actual thing. This is what it looks like. Yeah, so it, it's really the best blending brush I think I've ever used simply because it's making my blending so much more smooth, so much more blended, mm -hmm. but obviously it's very, very big. It isn't obviously going to be for everybody. If you've got smaller eyes or more hooded eyes, then you're probably not going to be able to do much on your eyelid with this brush. You could certainly use it to set underneath your eye concealer or pop highlighter on the cheeks or even put your blusher on um, if you've got a particularly small face but it's been really really good for blending and I have been reaching for it constantly. I've actually been setting my under eye concealer with it and doing my blending with it. Um, it's really soft as well. I don't know if it's synthetic or animal hair. I've got a feeling just because of the colouring and how soft it is, I've got a feeling it might be animal hair. So if you're not really into that, then this probably isn't going to be the brush for you. And before everybody starts asking me where I got Makeup Forever in the UK, my friend was in Madrid and brought it back for me. That's why I got it. But apparently they are launching in the UK soon um, within Debenhams, believe it or not. Whether or not it's just going to be London, I don't know. But surely you'll be able to get it online on Debenhams website, which I know a lot of makeup artists in the country will be screaming for joy for that. Okay, so the next product I'm going to show you guys is my Z palette. So I've actually had my Z palette for a wee while now. Um, but I literally wasn't doing anything with it. I had shoved a few um, Makeup Geek shadows in it because that's where I got it. I got it from the Makeup Geek website. But I literally had three Makeup Geek shadows in it and hadn't really done much else to fill it until now. What I did was I actually decanted all my MAC eyeshadows from the four quads that they used to be in. And I've made this palette. Um, so, to be honest with you, and there's a lot of nudes in it and then there's these four random crazy breaks at the end. So I think when I start buying more single pan shadows or palette refills, I'll definitely um, organise a sort of colour system a wee bit better. But I actually really liked 
decanting them all and putting them in my um, Z palette simply because it's quite nice to do it yourself and customise the palette to how you want it. Um, the first, sorry, the first four here, one, two, three, four, are Makeup Geek and the rest are MAC. But yeah, I think as time goes on, um, I'm going to buy obviously more Makeup Geek and more MAC pan refills because they're the only ones I think that really go in them. Um, but if you're looking to customise your own palette, I suggest going on the Makeup Geek website and get one of these or go straight to Z palette. Because I, I, really, I was really enjoying having the shadow choice that I wanted at my fingertips on location on Monday when I was shooting. Uh, it was quite nice just to have something that was kind of mine and you know like not branded and I had kind of put it all in together. The goal is now obviously to get some more Makeup Geek ones because they are amazing. Um, I wasn't hammered at customs. I know a lot of people speak about when they are from the UK and they've went to purchase Makeup Geek shadows they have had to pay like shitloads of customs charges. I really didn't, I didn't pay anything I don't think. I think I just paid the standard postage that Makeup Geek required on the website. Um, but yeah, can't wait to film that and I actually will do a video on filling it on what colours I've done and organisation on it as well. And I better put it down before I bloody break it. Okay guys, so the next product I'm going to talk about is the Urban Decay Afterglow 8 Hour Blusher. So it's a given that I'm obviously going to talk about Urban products because they are so much of my, so much, so heavily involved, sorry, in my everyday kind of makeup life. Um, it's just a given. The new Afterglow 8 Hour blushes are freaking amazing. So I'm going to show you the um, colours that have been actually my favourite. <coughs> Excuse me. So, the first one we have here is Score. Score, if you remember correctly, um, which is a nice peachy, golden, pinky. Um, if you remember our Bindicay from back in the day, Score has always been in whatever blush range that we had. It was one of the original three Afterglow blushes that we'd done way back in the day. It was one of the cream blushes that we'd done before this collection. And obviously it's made its way back into this one as well. It's still a very similar colour to what it always was. A very peachy pinky with a golden sparkle. The next colour I'm going to talk about is Quickie, so again a colour that has always been there from the original three Afterglow blushers to the cream blushers to this collection now and it's always been a Barbie neon pinky shimmered blusher. It's stunning. This one's a little bit more matte this time. It's very similar to Bobbi Brown's Purity if you ask me. We also do one called Obsessed, which is slightly lighter if you think this is a bit too OTT. But the great thing about these blushes is, is as scary as they look, they are very buildable. The reason there isn't a mirror on the compact is because they are guaranteed 8 hour wear, which means that you don't need to top up, so you shouldn't need to take this out. What I quite like the little grill here for is to actually test how much product I have on my blusher brush, and it's a great way of swirling it there and taking any excess off. So that colour is Quickie. The next one I'm going to talk about is Bang and it is this beautiful reddish orangey um, matte. Is it matte? Yeah, it's matte. And this for me, maybe not, for me personally, maybe not so much of a blusher but I am ready to shove this in my crease and be this red mistress. You all know how much I love red eyeshadow and red lipstick. And this little baby is really doing it for me. I think this is going to be beautiful on darker skin as a blush and on anybody as a warm um, crease colour. And then last but not least for the Afterglow blushes is the colour that everybody has went nuts for. It is Bitter Sweet. So this is the one that I put on my Instagram and it's this beautiful Parma Violet colour. Um, a lot of people have been looking at it and thinking, oh my god, it's beautiful, but not for me. You are wrong, sister. This literally goes on beautifully on anybody. Any skin tone, whether you're dark, whether you're medium, whether you're light. It is going to look great on you. 
It was really, really a colour that when I first seen it, I thought it would look good on some of the other girls in the shop. But again, not for me. Then when I tried it, I was actually blown away by how much it suited so many different people. I literally love this. It's a beautiful eyeshadow as well, great for the crease colour. Again, we've been doing that and a wee bit more experimental with them. But they are blushers at the end of the day and this colour is amazing. Don't be put off by it until you've literally swatched it and then almost please put it on your cheeks as well because I just feel like you'll still be a bit put off if you're just swatching it. Get someone to try it on you, it is absolutely beautiful and this colour along with the Bittersweet Lip Gloss which was in my summer um, festival tutorial has really been tipped to be the big colour for the, the summer season for Urban so really really go and check them out because they are amazing. So sticking on the Urban Decay theme, um, I'm going to talk about the new summer eyeshadows as well. A lot of you would have seen them in my, again, the summer festival tutorial. In that tutorial I used Riff, Tonic and Sideline. My favourites from the collection are actually Riff and Fireball. Riff is definitely my new crease colour. I'm using it pretty much every single day because you all know I like a warm crease. And Fireball is just the ultimate coral iridescent, beautiful, beautiful summer colour. <clears throat> what I've actually done is I've transferred a few of them a few, along with a few oldies into my six pan build your own palette. Unfortunately then this um, six pan one isn't available one but do not fret because there is a four pan available. Now I have, as I said, some of the, the new collection in here along with some old ones. So I'll tell you all the colours I have in here but the two that I'm particularly talking about are <clears throat> Riff here and Fireball here. Um, the other colours are Dive Bar from the new collection and Tonic from the new collection. This is one of the ones that you see me use in um, my summer festival look. This one obviously is Blackout and this one is X which is another one of my favourite urban shadows but I thought I would just show you how beautiful Riff and Fireball were so these two have literally been my everyday go to shadows recently. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today I thought I'd do a product of the moment or products of... I actually got it quite a while ago but I obviously haven't spoke about it yet. I don't think I spoke about it yet. And brush my hair. So there's me on the tube brushing away and because the Tangle Teaser doesn't have a handle like a normal brush it makes it really easy for it to Fly out your hands, Oof. the MAC ones I'm not going to lie, the magnets in them don't actually stay as well as the Makeup Geeks one, like the Makeup Geeks one, the Makeup Geek ones literally don't move but the MAC shadows do kind of flip and slide about it. 